Terry, my name's Alex. I'm one of the TAs at ArtProf. I feel like you're you're on the right path. I don't know if that journey is going to be another six months or another couple years, but you have such a good feel of the kind of work you want to tell, and you're really starting to uncover that in your own work. And so that's why as we go through this portfolio critique, if I say pieces are just not good enough for your portfolio, the harshness is coming from you're so close to achieving that style that will take you far. In a nutshell, what I'm going to say is to redo a lot of your portfolio. Don't be discouraged by that because if you have 14 images and there's like a couple that are amazing and they're really top quality stuff, you have to build up everything to match those. How we're gonna make this portfolio critique work is I'll go through each image and we'll kind of slowly start to compile the kind of list of things you're doing well, the uh, areas you could improve, and then from there we'll uh, talk about what the final steps are at the end and how you can take your career to the next level over the next couple months. We're gonna start off with this little robot guy who is super charming. And this is a good one to start with because it's showing all the things you're doing well and all the things that you could use improvement on. I love the image itself. It's simply and beautifully composed. And the thing that strikes me most about it is the simple color. I don't mean the simple color is in like just this punching red in the flower, which does have a charming look to it, your knowledge of color where if you look into the body of the robot, you see those blues, those greens, like some pinks, some yellows, and it doesn't come off as sloppy. And that's that sign of like the technique that you have and you knowing what is needed for a piece. Yeah, there's some things with the robot that would fix. I, it sounds funny to say the anatomy. So we'll talk about that in the, some of the uh, drawings of the people. I think my biggest critique with this robot, it looks to me as if you stopped at the first sketch you did when creating this character. This will be something that we'll say throughout this critique is that it looks like your characters need to be fleshed out a little bit more. This one is a great example of that. Starting off with that point, these two characters, they're just very simple. They're very bland, you know, like L.L. Bean catalog kind of thing where they don't really have a lot of personality and a lot of character in their appearance. So when you're creating a character, I love to talk about how every aspect of them can show a little bit of their personality. And not a lot of personalities being shown through these guys. Now, what is great here is the atmosphere. I love the texture you're doing in the woods. Your lighting is remarkable. That's something that as we talk through your portfolio, you consistently do very well. The light shining through the trees, like focusing you onto the tombstone, really good, powerful stuff. With these figures, you're starting to do some good work with personality, where the older one looking very serious and straight ahead, and then the younger child nervously looking towards him for guidance. See, you're starting to show that personality and character that we and like other publishers and things like that will want to see, but it just needs to be flushed out more. And that can be flushed out through character creation, through really doing a bunch of sketches of how you want these figures to look. Also, I'm really loving the variation of your mark making here. This will be something that throughout your digital work, you do very well. It doesn't have that bland, flat look. It really does have a life to it. This piece, it's a really a perfect example of your need to really flesh out the characters a little bit more and really give them some more depth. Now, the things this is doing well, of course, your lighting, really nice. I love the atmosphere you're creating with the moon. Also, I really like how she's this superhero figure. Now, and that sounds really weird and silly to say, but when I went to a illustration conference, they were talking a lot about how, thankfully, there's a huge push to really show strong female characters in young children's books. And I think that's an awesome thing to do. But this character, she just needs to be pushed further. She needs to have more personality. In a way, that's the same critique with these two figures. And the robot has a little bit more charm, but still, it, it needs to be pushed further. You actually have pieces later on in your portfolio that are great examples of solutions. But right now, she's just very simple, very the red cape, the blue, very superhero standard. Like even the converse are just very simple and straightforward. The anatomy on her needs a lot of work. I think your work is much stronger when you get really bold and start to show your own personality and your own personal touch in the style and the city as well that's it's very similar to the character it's very bland simple boxy city i'm not saying you have to make it a specific city like throw the eiffel tower in there and call it paris or anything like that similar to the characters just have some fun in creating it 
and really kind of let yourself go wild. Now, if you don't want it to be like a really funky, exciting sitting, that's cool, but it has to have a little bit more personality than it does. This is one of your strongest pieces in your portfolio. I love the style. I love the texture and the feel to it, the layers, the light, the atmosphere, the colors. It's all coming along so well. You say that you wanted to do cover and interior illustrations for uh, middle grade books for like big publishers and clients. This is nailing it. You're leaving the space for the text. You're leaving the space for the author. It is designed perfectly well. This is doing better than, say, the other pieces where the figures are very stiff, very rigid. They don't have a lot of life to them. This is getting a little better, but it's still not quite there. Now what this is doing is stylistically, it fits for this piece, if that makes sense. But with looking at the rest of your portfolio, I can see that's something you need to work on. And the best way to fix this, I think, is to get thee do some live figure drawing sessions. You have a lot of skill, but drawing figures at like a bus stop and a coffee shop just isn't going to cut it. Finding some local places that have figure drawing nights is going to be hugely beneficial because they'll have live professional models who will do very action-filled poses that'll have a lot of strength to them and a lot of movement. And that'll really help you learn how to give that same strength, movement, and therefore life into your figures. Also, this one is its doing a great job in comparison to the other two of really showing some personality in the characters. I can tell they're in like a classic school uniform, reminds me of like the thing that I wore growing up. Oh, I don't miss those days at all. So they're starting to have a little bit more personality, but still not too much. I would push the sketches of the characters a little bit further. I feel like its it shouldn't be in the portfolio, but that's not to say it doesn't have a lot of good qualities. I think in a nutshell, my main problem with it is that it doesn't convey the emotion that the scene is clearly meant to. We clearly have the main characters distressed, being pursued by this bird witch monster. The composition is so simple. The composition is so straightforward. The colors aren't helping convey the sense of what's going on. Look at this in comparison to the rest of the pieces. The size of your main character is always about the same. Spicing that up and really changing it is really going to help you move your work to the next level. Look at this piece and then I want you to imagine that you're like a director with a camera and think about what it would look like if you were in this like the bush that's in the foreground and the lens was shooting through there so it was framed by the bushes and the leaves and you were looking upwards at this figure running away and you didn't see the full monster you just saw hints of the monster behind it and then the colors changed to a much more somber subdued tone similar to this one picture that in your head and think of how rock out that composition would be that's the kind of work that you have to convey here the technique here with your digital work is not quite as strong as it is, say, in this piece. I would brush that up a little bit. All that being said, here we come to boom. This is, without a doubt, your best piece in the portfolio. I am loving this piece. This is the piece where it's like you made it and that instantly raised the bar for the rest of your work. Like this is the next level. It's doing all the things you do well. Look at the color in there. Look at the light. The light shining through the water, very hard to do that sense of mystery and fear, but it's also still safe. It's still appropriate for a kid's book. It's still appropriate for a middle grade book. Also the movement in the character. This is, I think, the only piece in your portfolio where that figure has a believable kind of life and anatomy to it. Put that above your drawing desk and be like, man, like that's that's the bar, you know? You've, you've set it high with this one. Not to be overlooked, Nice job on two pieces where this one needs a lot of work, but this one, you can tell it's the same character. So nice work on that. And to have a character still be recognizable just in a simple silhouette, nice work. This one is all right. It's not the strongest piece, but it's doing something really good that I'd love to talk about. This one is showing something great, which is when you're letting loose and letting your style show through. Now compare her with this little boy and these guys, the style of them has a feel that is only you. And that's really showing some character and some personality into these figures. But then you look at figures like this, 
and these characters, and they have no personality. They have none of that spark that makes you you. Like these are showing your technique, certainly. They're showing how you can use light and texture and your skills with digital art making, but they're not showing any of the character development, which is what people are looking for in the field you want to go into, which is the book and story illustrations. This one, this one, this one. They're starting to show a personality. They're starting to show that depth of character and that excitement that you can create with that. And excitement in subtle little scenes like this. For the piece itself, this does need a lot of work. The composition is pretty simple. There's space left for the text, but it doesn't really seem to doesn't really work out. I am liking the nice faded grass in the foreground there. That's a very nice touch. This one is a piece that it shouldn't be in your portfolio. There's a lot going wrong with it. This might sound harsh, but in the same way that this piece is everything good about your work, this piece is the opposite. It sounds funny, but I would almost like print these out and hang them side by side on your drawing desk and be like, this is what you have to stay away from. This is what you have to shoot towards. For there's a couple things going wrong with it. One is the composition. It's very, look at how many straight lines there are the figures, the aspen trees, it traps you as a viewer. Their poses would suggest that you want this to be a scene with action and movement. What if you shot from behind them, in front of them, above them? What if you shot through the trees at them? If you were, if the camera angle was lower or higher, right now it's right smack in the middle, looking at them straight on. Also the figures, again, very rigid, very robotic. The anatomy is off and like just enough to make it really bothersome. There's a problem here that's one of those like darned if you do, darned if you don't kind of ways. Part of me thinks that they're the older version of these two characters. Now, if that's the case, the problem you have is that the style is very different. So that's one problem. But if these two are not the same characters, then the problem is they look too much like the same character. Does that make sense? So it's either an inconsistency in a character being depicted in your style or it's the characters are too similar and it's not conveyed as a different scene. And that goes back to what I was saying for a lot of these pieces is you've got to focus more on sketching and really conveying some of the character's personality. Now, not without credit, there are ways that you're doing that here. You can tell that the kid up the front, the older one, is a lot more headstrong, rambunctious. The Jeans are tattered, he's wearing a t-shirt. The one behind him is a little more straight edge, a little more maybe timid and fearful. Got the collared shirt and the pants neatly rolled at the cuff. Those are the things that you have to really push to the next level as far as character creation goes. This series is really terrific. Look at the style here. Look at that fearlessness in your creation of this character. He's charming, like he's absolutely charming. The colors are coming off really well. You're showing the style of the character and that is what gives it personality. I love the colors of this. There's something that I wanna bring up with this one though in regards to this series, which we'll go into each one of those eventually. This one works so well for like a children's book, early reader, picture book. But the problem is those are 32 pages. Compositionally and color wise, I get bored looking at these by the third image. Imagine if there's 32. So you got a good concept here, but you're really hitting the same thing over and over again. I gotta say, I like each one of them just about equally, but you gotta pick one and then do the others again and think of how they can still be conveyed as being in the same world, in the same book as it were, but not be repetitive, not be boring for the viewer. Yeah, this one, I'm loving how the colors of the shadow echo the colors of the mouse. Really nice. Not just because it's a superhero, but this is a great one to compare to this. Again, what, what we were saying where this character is very flat, like I don't feel anything for this character. This little mouse, look at that guy. Look at all that character and personality you're putting into that. These guys too, absolutely charming. Cute little like almost shy romance going on, or at least that's what I'm interpreting it as. A little awkward mouse feet and the ballet slippers is just adorable. The characters, they're very simple. They're not really pushing the boundaries, but you know what's making them memorable for me is the colors. You are being exciting with the colors. I'm not the least surprised that this is working for your work. Because when you look at what you've done in really making color work for you, I'm not at all surprised that color is what helps you make your characters come to life. These are really nice, but you've got to think of a way to add some variation to them. Also that trike, you got to redraw that, but that trike. There's no seat. It's in a way, it's a good series, 
but it's only one image, if that makes sense. Yeah, like we said earlier, you've got to find a way to make them connected without being repetitive. You're concerned about your work being too realistic and the problem that might pose for you. The good things that are coming on with this one, this character has a lot more character than some of your other figures. I'm seeing some personality in her face. I'm loving the hair, loving her dress, but all of those things have their own problems. The anatomy throughout is pretty bad. It needs to really be studied more. And like I said, that's that's just a whole other realm of practice that you've just got to be diligent with, like going to live figure drawing sessions and really getting that focused. The dress, it's, it's really flat. The feet are very flat as well. It's got to get some more movement, some more life to it. This image specifically, I think you should take it out of your portfolio. But I really like how you're showing the black and white. And we'll talk about that at the conclusion of where to take your portfolio next. A lot of publishers are looking for illustrators to have almost half their portfolio be black and white. The reason being because almost half of published work is in black and white. I would remove it because your digital skills are shown so much stronger elsewhere in your portfolio. It's almost like that weird hybrid between like photo and digital really isn't coming across well here. There's not a serious artist I know who doesn't come across the same problem that you did where I can tell how much time you spent on this piece but it's overworked. You're showing a lot of your skill, but it comes off too much. It's like a, you let loose all the fireworks at once. That would be the, my problem with this is that compositionally, it's just there, it's simple, it's a little too saccharine as far as the character and the scene goes. The things are doing nice. I like the face here. I like the hair there, but still it makes me crave the style that we've seen like in this one and this one. I don't think that like shooting for photorealism is where your your gift really lies. I mean, you can shoot for it if you want. Your artistic journey is about your goal and how you want to get there. But for me looking at it, your strength is in characters like this and characters like this and this. So I would stray away from work like this. You're having problems with anatomy and they're kind of like really sticking out strong because you're shooting for that photorealism. The textures are all very similar played throughout. I can tell how much time you put into this, but unfortunately, yeah, it's not one for the portfolio. Now, to talk about how you take this to the next step. Again, looking at this one, this one, this one, just those three. Look at those pieces and look at what you're doing with them. You're creating atmosphere using light and you're creating scenes that are applicable in a publishable market that you want to specifically go to. And that's one of the greatest strengths about your work. When reading your artist statement, you are serious and you are going for it. You're getting the jobs that you can right now, but you're looking at the next level. I don't know if that's going to take six months or a couple of years, but you are on that path. Some of these pieces like really aren't cutting it. I can tell and I can see in the, the world you're making, the atmosphere, the light, the characters that are starting to develop. You've got some stuff here and you just have to keep pushing it and keep taking it to the next level. And the question for you then is, how do you do that? You have here then three pieces that you can look at as a guiding rod. And I can tell you, and I have told you what I like about them and what I think are the strengths in these. But really you as your own illustrator, you have to identify what you like about them. What I would recommend is taking this scene, this character of the female superhero, and I would do a bunch of character sketches. I would really flesh this character out, make her exciting. Because I think part of the charm in this is the things like the, the converse in there. She comes across definitely as like kid's book rather than superhero, rather than Marvel Comics. I think this is going to be a nice challenge for you is still creating a world that fits for a um, middle grade book publication rather than a comic book publication, but creating this character and doing a series of it. One in color, two in black and white. Then this one, I would maintain this image as it is, but then I would make two other images focusing on these same characters. The trick is then going to be making it consistent in style and also giving the character's life, spark of life that we were talking about you need in your work, how it becomes very rigid. I would redo this one. You don't have to do it exactly as the advice I gave, but start thinking about it that way. How can you show this in a way that would be exciting and enticing? This one also gives me another idea that you should work on is an image for your portfolio, three chapter headers done in black and white. I got this idea by looking at just the basket with the berries falling out of it. What if this was for a middle grade book, chapter one, and a nice charming little pencil drawing of that basket? 
that could really start to show the realm of work that you can do. In your artist statement, you were talking about how now you're getting some illustration jobs, but not the kind of clients that you want, not the kind of work that you want. I had a tough moment like this, like about a year ago, where I was in that same boat where I was getting a lot of work, but it wasn't the work I wanted to get. You kind of have to recognize, no, I'm not about just getting paid to do the art. I'm about doing the artwork that I want to do. Even if it means getting up a part-time job, like not doing art, even if it means not getting paid for art for a while, I think that might be worth it, is focusing on your portfolio more and making the work that you want to make, not the work that you have to make. And that is how you're going to identify your style. That's how you're going to push your characters to the next level. And I think that's where you're going to push your work to the next level. Your work, it's really got some strong stuff going on. Play around more with it. Play around more with character. You mentioned that you have the skill with the watercolor, but apart from these little mice, we haven't seen much of it in the portfolio. I would flesh that out a little bit more. Don't be too worried about having too digital heavy. You're good at what you're good at, and you gotta show people what you're good at. Otherwise, great work. Please keep it up. I'm excited to see where your work goes from here. Thanks so much, Carrie. Really, really enjoyed looking at your portfolio.